So this shows you non-farm payroll uh, growth on a year-over-year basis. So when we talk about the, the growth slowing of it all, that's what it is. 100% of people on old Wall Street and in its media will, will not talk about it this way. The same 100%, I'll remind you, that missed being long bonds for the last year as a direct result of labor putting in its peak last year. <laughs> so 100 and 100, we like 100%, okay? Um, forget the 1%. You know, we're in the one one thousandth of a millionth of a percent when it comes to this topic. Um, and this is, this is just a fact. I mean, non-farm payroll growth trends towards 0% growth 100% of the time once it's past its cycle peak. Okay, did I say that correctly, Darius? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we want to be very correct when we speak. Yeah, so these are numbers, and, and, and again, based on, unless it's different this time, 100% of the time, that 1.72% year-over-year non-farm payroll growth number that you can see under July there, which is, yeah, it's just a, it's just a slow-moving train wreck. This is why the Fed has to constantly, uh, in the face of slowing labor data, pivot back to dovish. So, you know, they get this good one, Good and bad, as we've said many times, doesn't mean anything to us other than how we trade it uh, or risk manage it. And yes, you have to trade to risk manage. Um, but all we're really doing there is we're just trying to be smart um, about not you know, selling low and buying high. Um, all you got to do is get this trend right. And if you get it right for multiple quarters at a time and you're to continue to, I mean, the probability, by the way, is highest that in Q3 and Q4, non-farm payroll growth slows dramatically actually from here, uh, not just a little bit. So you get, you get, you know, if it, do, if it doesn't sh slow dramatically, it's just going to slow. And as labor data slows, you know, towards 0% growth, the Federal Reserve will not be able to raise interest rates. This is one of the top five reasons why you have American Goldilocks right now, because you really don't have to have GDP. You definitely don't have to have earnings growth. Um, and, and as long as you don't have those things, it insulates the Federal Reserve's ability to do absolutely nothing, and, and people chase these these massive charts. And um, yeah, that's where you're at. I, I wrote it this morning. It's in the early look note. If you want to read it, it's called American Goldilocks, and I think it's appropriately uh, entitled given this jobs report. Absolutely. And there's a, a few things I would add to, to your commentary as well, Keith. So number one, you know, 100% of the time, you're definitely right at 100% of the time, you, you peak on not your every rate of change. Obviously, it slows to uh, converge to zero and, and turns negative, actually. Um, but, you know, but the pace of that is always, you know, sort of in question. But what you see towards the very end of the cycle, you know, when you get down to the last two, three, four quarters of expansion, you know, you notice that pace of deterioration really starts to accelerate meaningfully to the downside. So we show that on slide, um, I think it's slide 21 in the macro deck, um, but also in that chart. We show how as the pace of deterioration accelerates to the downside, you typically see an acceleration in wage growth, um, which as we've called out you know, in meetings obviously on the road, you and I, um, with a lot of clients, effectively wage growth is, could be the next nail in the coffin for corporate profits. At the same time, you're having decelerating um, employment growth. So obviously that's really negative for the consumer in terms of aggregate income growth, but from a headline basis, and certainly looking at last, the last Friday's jobs report, you know, wage growth holding at a cycle high of 2.6%, you know, that's definitely, on a headline basis, that's what consensus will call, that this is good. But 100% of the time, when you get good wage growth, you're basically bumping up into recession. So, I mean, th that's probably the key takeaway I'd highlight there. And then secondly, um, you, you had a pretty uh, decent uh, increase in temp employment, but the, what, the, the fact remains, as we show on slide 43 in the macro deck, uh, temp employment continues to decelerate off its of cycle peak, um, which was in December 2015. Um, the reason that's important is because temp employment has historically led uh, job openings by about three quarters, and job openings tends to lead the, the total peak in non-farm employment by about one to three quarters. So effectively what you're saying is if, as long as temp doesn't recover its December 2015 cycle peak, you should expect to see jolts sort of start to trend lower from here at some point in the second half of this year. Um, we're going to get the jolt data updated, jolt data on, on Wednesday of this week, I believe. Um, if, as long as that continues to trend lower from here, then obviously the peak in non-farm payrolls the absolute peak, the peak that will effectively start you know, date the recession that we uh, that may commence in, in some time in the beginning of next year or the first half of next year, um, that that's that's forthcoming as well. So these you know these things really matter in terms of contextualizing the labor cycle as where you are within the, the agri economic cycle. Obviously, you you can do nothing. You know, obviously trading trading one day or trading for a week on any given jobs report is, is something you can make money on. But for, in terms of really getting the trend right. 
and understand where you are in the cycle. That's something we're definitely trying to help people uh, with contextualizing.